I am so excited to be here this morning. I uh, don't have as much time as I thought because my 8 a.m. doctor's appointment got moved, but it looks like I am live and I'm going to chat for a couple seconds this morning if I can figure out how to make Facebook work. It's still not letting me go live from Facebook, so yeah. Um, anyway, uh, today I was going to just come on and talk a little bit. Hey, Jen, you look like me. Um, I was going to talk a little bit about affirmations and when they work, <coughs> how they work, and why they sometimes don't work. All right, so before I do that, I'm going to take a couple seconds just to collect my energy because it's been all over the place. And uh, now I see you, Jen, and I invite anyone who's catching the live or the replay to do that too. So just take a couple seconds and just kind of tune into your breath. Start to just bring your energy and attention into your body. Feeling into that inner field of the body. The energy rhythm vibration of your physical form. For some of you, the anchor for doing this is just taking a couple of seconds to notice your breath. Right, those sensations of breathing, the feeling of the air as it comes in and out of your nostrils the tickle as it goes down your throat, the rise and fall of your chest and belly as you inhale and exhale. Hmm. Beautiful. I'm just bring all that energy and attention there. I'm going to ground myself too. Hey, Diana. I'm going to imagine a nice, for me today, it's a big bolt of light from the base of my spine into the earth. And that light is gonna stretch all the way up through the center column of my body and up to the heavens so that I am just beautifully balanced between those two planes of heaven and earth. I'm gonna to ask to connect to my highest guidance on this topic today. And um, I'll connect anyone who's listening as well. And I ask that the outcome of this work serve the greatest good. All right, so I only have a couple minutes so I better do this fast. So affirmation. So this week on the podcast, again, we're talking about the law of attraction and we're talking about the question of, are you a magnificent manifester? And um, the, the cheat answer to that is you are, we all are, um, because you can't help but manifest because the law of attraction is the essential way the universe works. And so again, being a magnificent manifester often really means are we consciously creating our life and a life that we love and are we creating with that deeper force of life in a, in a more conscious and inspired manner? So that's, that's what's in the episode. I'm also starting a class tonight on uh, the law of attraction and manifesting miracles in 2022. Uh, so you still have time to sign up for that. It starts tonight at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. Um, and replays are available if you can't make all the lives. It's a four-week class. But anyway, so that's coming up too. And so it inspired me to just come on and talk just a little bit more about the law of attraction because it is a topic that is very much uh, in my space right now. And I wanted to talk specifically today briefly about affirmations. And affirmations are these ideas, right? We've all, anyone who's done any kind of spiritual work or new agey work has heard this idea, I think positively. And you repeat these different affirmations about yourself. I am lovable. I am strong. I am powerful. I'm a millionaire, right? Whatever it is, we have learned this idea that if we uh, practice thinking and engaging with certain empowering thoughts, that we can bring more of that into our space, right? So if we say, I am lovable, and we practice that, or I love and accept myself, then eventually we'll start to feel that way and we'll start to attract things in that reflect back that inner state. Because the way the law of attraction works, my friends, is your inner state of being is what attracts what you experience in the outer world. So affirmations are made to kind of shift that a little bit for you and to sort of shift that internal energy. So I do love affirmations. But I do think that like everything else that we learned, there are some pitfalls with working with them. Number one, the reason an affirmation works is because it gets us excited. It gets us into feeling what we are affirming, 
So when you say an affirmation, you can feel, ah, I'm lovable, I'm lovable, I'm lovable. And you feel that in your bones, right? That's where you shift your energy. If an affirmation is something that seems like totally remote, like you can't get to it at all, it can sometimes be a stretch, right? Or sometimes what people do is they say an affirmation, but when they're saying the affirmation, what they're really thinking is, I don't want to feel like this anymore. I don't want to feel like this anymore. I don't like, want to feel like this anymore. So I'll say the affirmation. Whew. When you put that energy out there, and friends, I know of what I speak. When you put that energy out there, the universe just hears, I don't want to feel this. And boom, the feel this part happens. And, and you keep having the experience that you're saying the affirmation to make it go away. Now, don't give up hope completely because again, I often think of affirmations as planting seeds and every act that you do is fertilizing your garden. Um, so it's not that the affirmation is not working. It's just that the sum total of the energy that you're sending out is skewed more towards what you don't want than where you would like to go and experience more. Does that make sense? So when we do an affirmation, we kind of want it to be believable. We kind of want to get excited about it. We kind of want to feel into the energy of it. We don't just want to be like, you know, on the roller coaster, grabbing on for dear life saying, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. Because, you know, clearly in those moments, you don't feel okay. However, it, it, it probably is better than saying I'm going to die, right? <laughs> so it's, it's still good. And if you're on a roller coaster, my friends, you're not going to die. It just feels a little scary right now. All right, so that was the first point about affirmations. The second thing about affirmations is a lot of times we affirm things that are just like completely not believable, right? So I am a millionaire, I am a billionaire, may not be where you're at right now, right? That might be a huge stretch of the imagination. And so it might be hard for you when you hear these words to feel into them. And remember, it's the feeling, the sensing, the getting excited about something that brings it towards you. Okay, so the first pitfall is sometimes people are putting out one thing, saying one thing, but feeling something else. The second one is they just can't connect with the with the message yet. It doesn't feel real to them. Two solutions to this, if that feels like you and, and to know this, you want to feel into it. You want to you know, feel that information. How true does this feel for me right now? Or how possible is this? And then feel it in your body. You'll know. So the second so the two ways around that are number one. Get your affirmations more intuitively, find the ones that feel right. And you can look at them like little stepping stones, right? If feeling lovable isn't there for you, but feeling beautiful, right? And valuable and kind is start with those, work up to it. And it's okay to the guides say to put something out there that you don't quite believe in, but mix it with things that you do so that you can stream all that energy around and start to stream energy to the place where it feels like it doesn't want to go yet. Okay. And some affirmations to make them believable tomorrow, I'm going to inherit 7 million bucks. I mean, you know, you might, uh, but if, if you can't, you know, you may want to go more with like, you know, I am abundance, right? I am abundance because that is something that we can all feel into. At least I can feel into that. The other cool thing I'm going to invite her on the podcast very shortly. So hopefully she will join and share this. Uh, one of the people that I've worked with, Marie, Marie Manu Sherry, she has this idea of the what if question. And her idea is that when we, um, when we verbalize um, affirmations in a what if format, right, it, it makes them more of like a supposition. It doesn't get that the ego all like, well, that's not possible. And, and so it doesn't, it kind of doesn't get, you know, our dander up. I don't know if that's the expression, but whatever. I'm just trying to go fast. So she'll say like, you know, what if I'm lovable and beautiful and adorable? And that what if makes it a supposition. It makes it, there's some curiosity. It lightens the energy, right? What if I am abundant? What if I can, what if I have a rock star immune system? What if, I'm calm and happy. What if I, I feel easily loved, adored, and cherished? I'm just throwing some out there. Um, so the what if question is another really cool way to do that. And I think that's really uh, a huge revelation on her part that she came up with that. And I see now more people are watching. Hey, Barbara. Um, my, my feet on my computer seems to be done with me. Um, so anyway, so that's another way that we can kind of play with affirmations. 
And then one more thing wants to come through, but I have to kind of tune in and see what it is. And last time the doctor called me like 15 minutes before. And then when I didn't call them back, they canceled the appointment. So um, that's why I can't talk for very long. But um, let me tune back in because there's one more thing that wants to come through. So affirmations work again because they get us excited. They, they distract us towards a new way of thinking, right? We all have our mental habits. We all have our, our ingrained socially conditioned way of viewing the world. And what an affirmation does is it shakes things up a little bit and it gives us a new point of focus, right? When we can take that point of focus with fun, with joy, with excitement, not with forcing or pushing, because if you're pushing and saying like, I am lovable, you're sending out the energy, of course, that you don't feel lovable, <laughs> right? So we play with them. We have fun with them. It's not the words themselves that do it, but words are very powerful. So words will get you to feel a certain way. When you work with affirmations, it's really great to change them up. It's really great to keep tuning in and seeing, is this intuitively real for me? Is this intuitively right? Because just like everything else, you can take an herb, say, for 10 years to help you with one thing, and then you need something else right? So we always want to be in the now and we always want to tune in and come back. Is this, is this really where I want? Is this really what I need right now? Because sometimes we hang on to things and we've already established that. We want, again, our, our affirmations to be at least vaguely believable, right? And the guides say too, we want to say them if we can with a smile, right? Because an affirmation should be positive, by the way. So an affirmation is not, I don't want to feel crappy anymore, because that is telling the universe that I feel crappy and the universe will be like, okay, if, if you insist. So they're positive statements. But I think the biggest thing that wants to come through on this is that when you're choosing your affirmations, try to get them intuitively. All right, doctor on the phone, bye.